Hello, welcome to another coding challenge. In this coding challenge, I'm going to do a tutorial and look at um, how to work with the recently released social media data released by the White House. So the White House made an announcement today saying, hey, we are inviting artists, designers, researchers, scientists, people, of anybody to work with and make projects around the social media data from the White House, from POTUS, from FLOTUS over the last eight years. So check this video's description. There'll be a link to the White House uh, press release. And in that press release, there are links to download Twitter data for the POTUS account, the FLOTUS account, the White House account, as well as uh, Facebook data and Vine data as well. So hopefully I'll do another coding challenge or some tutorials around working with some of the image or video data. So what I'm doing here is I just want to do a kind of drop dead simple example of how to sort of like get access to the, um, the Twitter data and how you can start to look at it and manipulate it and like, like just present it back in a web page. I'm going to do kind of a simple example with no point of view, but I'm hoping this might inspire people to make projects uh, projects that are uh, critical in nature or political in nature or uh, uh, wacky in nature, whatever you can kind of like think of and be creative with with this data. And also, you know, there are lots of other Twitter accounts out there and I, I don't want to like, you know, there is this other incoming president who has a very active Twitter account which only gives me a lot of like pain and anxiety. But that said, you know, you might think about what kinds of uh, projects could you make out of this data set alongside of other data sets um, as well. So, uh, so now, first of all, the data itself, if you go to the links and get it, you're going to get the data as a CSV file, meaning a spreadsheet, a comma separated values file. Um, what I've done for this video is I've converted it into a JSON file. So I have two, I'll, in the code that I'll link to, you'll see there are two data files, POTUS.json and FLOTUS.json. And these are JSON files that have all data for every single tweet from both of those accounts since those accounts um, started. If we go to the POTUS.json file, uh, we'll see here it is a big array of tweet objects. Each object has an ID, a timestamp, source, meaning what was, what was it tweeted with, Twitter for iPhone. So interesting to look at. The text and some other metadata associated with that tweet. Now, this isn't the full metadata associated with a particular tweet. Uh, and you don't see like how many times was that tweet liked or retweet or what are the replies to that tweet. These are things, however, that you could get access to by using the Twitter API because you have the, the ID for each tweet. So for any tweet ID, you could say, hey, how many likes did this tweet have or give me all the replies to this particular tweet. So at some point, I'll try, maybe I can make some other video tutorials about working with the Twitter API and that. So, but I'm just going to use this particular raw data. So the first thing that I need to do is figure out how do I even load this data into a program that I'm writing? And I'm going to do this in JavaScript, HTML and CSS for a web page, and I'm also using the P5.js JavaScript library. Um, more about that in this video's description as well. Okay, so in P5, I'm going to go to my code, which um, is here. So uh, P5.js is a framework that asks you to write a setup function and a draw function. The draw function is for an animation loop if I'm going to do something animated, which I don't know whether or not I'm going to do. So I'm going to leave that out for right now. And the setup function, I'm going to, and actually I'm going to add another function. I'm going to say function preload. And I'm going to create a variable called POTUS tweets. And I, in preload, I'm going to say POTUS tweets equals load JSON uh, POTUS.json. So what I want to do first is just say, hey, I want to load all the stuff that's in that JSON file into a variable. And in setup, I'm going to say console.log POTUS tweets. So let's make sure loading the data itself works. And other JavaScript frameworks or native JavaScript have other ways of loading JSON data from a file, but this is one way. OK, <clears throat> so I'm going to go now here. I'm going to hit refresh and we can see, great, looks like it came in. It's a big array. We can see like if I scroll down, there's going to be a lot of, there's actually only 320 tweets. The nice thing about this particular data set from the POTUS account is that was a new account um, from just maybe a year or two ago. I don't know when the first, we can, we'll see as we look at the data when the first tweet was, but it doesn't have that much data in it. So it makes it easy for us to kind of work with and play around with. So if I look at any particular tweet, we can see here is the, information, the ID, the timestamp, and the text. I just met with CEOs of some of our biggest companies who are blah, blah, blah. OK, so the f what do I want to do here? I think what I want to do is just sort of see, uh, uh, let's, I, I, what I want to do is try to find the most frequently used word in a tweet for each month. 
So I need to figure out how to first at least parse the dates of the, the tweets. So um, the first thing that I want to do here is definitely have some sort of for loop. So I can say for loop i equals zero, i is less than POTUS tweets dot length, i plus plus. You know what, I'm going to make this variable just called POTUS because I'm going to probably use it a bunch of times and now it's a little bit shorter. And then what I could do is I could say something like, hey, let me create p POTUS index i dot uh, tweet id. And what that's going to do is POTUS tweets is not defined. Oops, because I changed it to POTUS. So I'm going to say var tweets equals POTUS dot tweets. And so now I can look at tweets dot length and create a paragraph for each tweet ID. And we can see, there we go. Here are all the IDs. I can look at each uh, tweet's text. And here you can see here are all, here's the text of all the tweets. And now you can see this, by the way, looks, makes much more sense. It's actually listed as an array. I should have noticed that earlier. Uh, and um, um, so, so we have the data. So what can I do now? First, let's just see if I could count the number of tweets by month. Okay. So the first thing that I want to look at is the date timestamp. Uh, so if I look at this, if I look at each object, this here's the timestamp. Whoops is this. So if I come back and say, let's look at the timestamps, we can see, and we can see this, by the way, is the newest tweet in this data set is November 11th, and the oldest tweet is uh, May 18th, 2015. I think five is May. <laughs> I hope so. Okay, so now I have all the timestamps. So now what can I do with that? So one of the things that's interesting about JavaScript um, I'm what I'm going to do is put this uh, date. I keep writing data. Date. Console.log date. And so let's look at this for a second. Oops, tweets is not defined. So these are all, I'm putting them in the console. The reason why I'm doing that is I just want to grab one of them. And I'm going to um, kind of muck around and figure out how do I work with a string that's a date in JavaScript. So if I say date equals that, I now have that string in this particular variable. Let's try some stuff. I've done this before. I just can't really seem to remember. New date, date. Oh, that's interesting. So that seemed to work date.get uh, month. Four, look at this. We're in good shape, right? Four. Now, isn't the month five? Why did I get four? So if I have this string, I can create a date object, and then I can call functions on that. Five, four. But think about this. January is zero. February is one. March is two. Oh, this is so hard. April is three. And May, five, the fifth month, is four. So index four. So we start counting from zero, we're going to get four instead of five. So what I can do now in the code is I can say um, a date object is a new date with the timestamp. I can say the month is date dot get month. The year is important too here. The year is date dot get year. So now I have both the month and the year for a particular tweet. And what I can do is I can say the uh, key now is month plus, uh, I'll just put a slash, plus year. Why am I doing this? Because if you've watched any of my videos about word counting, what I want to do is I need to associate a number, the number of tweets that month with a key. And the unique identifier of a particular month is the month and the year. Because I want to differentiate February 2016 from February 2015, for example. Okay, so now we're getting somewhere. I need an object, which is, I'm going to call it uh, tweet counts. 
I'll just call it counts. And it's going to be an object. And what I want to do is I want to figure out if counts, and I'm going to say has own property key. So I want to know, does this object already have a property that's that month? If it does, increase its count. So what I'm doing is I'm counting every time a tweet has the same month and year. If it does not, I need to add that property. I need to add that property and give it a count of one. So if now I console log counts here and I run this program again, we can see here's my object. Get full year. Thank you. Somebody in the chat says that the function I'm actually looking for is get full year. So let's run that again and we can see there we go. So thank you. So the, that other function is doing something else slightly different. So we can see I'm now counting each by year. So, so now we could visualize this data. Let's visualize this data uh, using Canvas and draw like a little bar graph or something like that. So one thing I'm going to do is I'm going to say create, create Canvas, which is a P5 function for making a Canvas, 600 by 400. I'm going to say uh, background 0. So now we can see uh, here, we can see I have a, uh, a canvas that I'm going to draw to. Um, other thing I can do is now what I want to do, hmm. Now, did I get lucky? <laughs> Are, like, so, so here's the thing. The order of the months is kind of important for what I'm doing, right? I want the oldest month to be first and the newest month to be last. So let's look at, one thing I can do here really quickly is I can say var months equals counts or object.keys counts. So this is a way of me pulling out just all of the keys that are in that particular object and just putting them in an array. Let's look and see what order they're in. So the order is 10, 16, they're in, this looks like they're in sorted order but in reverse. So I should be able to say now months.reverse. I could have sorted it, but I got lucky here. They're just they're in the right order, just in reverse. So I'm going to reverse it. And now I can say for var i equals zero, i is less than months dot length i plus plus. And so now let's say I want to just draw a little bar graph. So the first thing is the width of the canvas is 600. And I want to draw a bunch of like rectangles or lines or something. So I need the width of each one of those should be the width of the canvas divided by how many months I actually have to draw. And then I can just say, let me draw, I, the, each rectangle is going to have some sort of height. Let's just say the height right now is 100. Each rectangle is going to be some color. Let's just say it's um, some shade of gray. And so if I draw a rectangle at i times w, right, the number of months times the width, comma, the bottom of the canvas, minus the height, right? So this is a little, so the thing that I'm trying to do here is I want a bar graph. So a bar graph involves a rectangle coming from the bottom. But the way, the easiest way in P5 to define a rectangle is from this point here. So what I actually want to do is say the x location is the height of the window minus the height of that rectangle. That'll give me that point right there. So if I come back here and I say, uh, a height minus h, and then the width, and I'm going to say width minus 1 to have a little space, and then uh, the actual height itself. Oh, sketch line 32. Oh, float. I wrote float because, again, I'm used to programming in Java, but here it's just var. And you can see there are all of my bars. They're all the same height. If I made them a random height, We can see there's now a bar graph of bars, just drawn in Canvas. D3, for example, if I use that, would be able to do this probably for me automatically with SVGs and be so fancy, but this is one way of doing it in P5. So now, I want those bars to actually not just be random numbers, but I want them to tie to the actual number of tweets. So what I can do is I can say num equals uh, counts index, the, the key, months, index i. So this is a little, that syntax is a little bit ugly looking 
and confusing to follow, so I'm just going to say month equals months index i, and then I want the count for that particular month, and h I'm just going to say is equal to that particular number. So we can see now here's my graph of tweets frequency by month. And then, you know, there's not that many, so I could say, you know, times 10. And we could say I expanded it up. Now, one thing I might want to do is actually normalize the data. So I might want to find the maximum value and the minimum value, and then normalize each bar so that the maximum is the tallest. Let's quickly add that here. Um, you know, again, a library, uh, you know, a data library is going to do this kind of stuff for you automatically, but we could pretty quickly normalize this data ourselves. And uh, what I want to do is, there's probably, I'm trying to think, there's like all sorts of like fancy ways you could probably do it, but I'm going to do it in a very simple way, which I'm going to say like uh, max, max tweets equals zero. So I'm going to start by assuming that the max tweets are zero. Then I'm going to look through here, I'm going to just look through all of the values in advance. Uh, the same way I'm doing here. But I'm going to say if num is greater than max tweets, oops, <coughs> then max tweets is that number. So what I'm doing is I'm doing a quick loop to say like, I assume the max tweets are zero. Anytime I find something bigger than that, that'll be the maximum number. So now I have the maximum amount of tweets. And now what I could do is I could say h equals map. I could use p5's mapping function, which takes the number of tweets, which has a range between 0 and max tweets, and map that range to between 0 and what? Um, how about um, height? How about um, height divided by, uh, well, let's not be too fancy about this. The, the window is 400 pixels high. I'm just going to say 300. So now, if we do this again, we can see that this particular month, which had the highest number of tweets, is at the, the top of, of our sort of, of, of our mapping. So, the, um, so this is now the bar graph of Obama's POTUS, uh, the POTUS accounts tweets by month from uh, the first month, which looks like it's for, uh, May 2015 all the way to November uh, 2016. Okay. Uh, okay, so now let's, this, so we've gotten somewhere, we're doing a little bit of visualization. Things that if you were, when I, after I published this code, if you want to like try to do your own stuff with this, you know, you could have a mouse over, you could have a key to show the, the months, you could have another Twitter account, you could, have, you could add the Flotus account to have like the, the, the bars side by side. You could hover over it to see more information. I could put the number of the actual tweets, I could draw that onto the canvas as well. But all that aside, let's do a little bit of something else. Let's do some word counting to see if we can find the most frequently used word for each month as well. Okay, now, so this is something I'm going to need to deal with here. So in addition, I have key by month, but what should each one of those months have? Each month should actually have a dictionary of words and their counts. So we, we, in, we in, in immediately have made this program so much more complex, right? The only thing we're associating with each month right now is a number, how many tweets. But now what I need to do is really I need to have an object, right? And in that object, I might start off with some stuff like the number of tweets, total is one. And then I might have words, which is going to be another object. So for each month, right, and counts is kind of like the wrong word now, but I'll just leave it in there. I have, I want to have an object that stores information about all the words that were used that month and the total number of tweets that month. And then here, this has to change to dot total plus plus, right? Because I'm increasing the total each time it's found it already. And then, I am also here, what would have to change is uh, dot total and dot total here. So I should have the same exact program right now. Mm, I missed something. So I had said months index i dot total, which doesn't exist for the month, one of these weird mysterious JavaScript problems. 
Here we go. So now I'm back to where I started, but I have an opportunity now to add more. So the thing that I need to do is also look at the text. So the text is the tweet, tweets index i dot, dot text. So now I have the text of each tweet. The words, so to speak, are that text split, right? The split function takes a piece of text and chops it up into pieces, makes it into an array. And the thing that I tell it to split by, that's what the thing that's in between words. So the simplest thing I do is just split by space. Or I could say split by space or comma or period. I'm going to do something a little bit goofy, which is I'm going to say, and this is using a regular expression, um, so I have some video tutorials about that. Split by anything that is not a word character. So this means backslash w is a meta character that stands for any character that isn't a letter or a number. Use that to split. And the plus means it's okay if there's a bunch of those in a row. So if it's exclamation point, exclamation point, exclamation point, or comma space, use those together to split. So if I even just look at this console.log words and run this program again, we can see here that you can see I now have all of these arrays of words. So now what I need to do is count, right? This words object should have every single word and account in it. Boy, this is like nested objects, so it's a lot to hold into our head here. I think I could do it. And you might, if, if you're having trouble following, like a pencil and paper diagramming this might help. Pause. Put, don't put me on a half speed because I sound like a drunk person, to be honest. But even, anyway, that's another, another, another story for another time. There's no story there. What am I talking about? Okay. Um, so uh, what was I saying? Right. So now what I need to do. Uh, is, uh, okay, so this should, I'm, I'm thinking here because this is, I made this a hard problem. So this should happen first. I should, because uh, I need to figure out if there's an object there already. Once that's done, I actually should be doing this afterwards. So once that's done, I can do this. And what I can do now is I can loop through, and I think I don't want to use i here, right? I'm already inside a loop with i, so I better make sure I use a different index for this particular loop. Look at every single word. Word equals words index j. Now what I want to do is something very similar, right? I actually want to now count the frequency of the words. So what I want to do is say, uh, word, uh, what I want to do is say, uh, if counts, right, counts is the key, it counts key, counts for this particular month, dot words has own property, right, if this particular words object has that property already, Oh boy, I made this really complicated. Um, then counts index key dot words index word plus plus. So each word is going inside of that words object is going to be associated with a number. Otherwise, set its initial value to one. Okay. So this is a, this requires there's a lot of nesting going on here, and I think if we look at the object itself in the console, it'll actually help make this immediately clear because it seems sort of crazy, but it's actually not that, but, but the nesting here is confusing because there is an object called counts and for each member of that object, for each property, each month property, there is an object that has a total and a words object and that words object has a bunch of words and counts totals in that as well. And that's what I'm doing down here. Okay, so let's put back in, uh, it's, oh, it's there already. So let's run this again. And we can see here, here is this, um, whoops, here is this object. So what I want to look at is, let's see if this worked. So let's look at a particular, what was the month that had the most? It was zero, one, two or something? So let's look at, oh no, who knows? This was in reverse order. So I'm, uh, oh, this is not in order, whatever. Let's look at this, 27 tweets. 
and words as an object. And you can see here, blank was 33 times. So that's something I need to deal with, the fact that, oh, look, there's some like extra noise. And you can see here's all the other words in alphabetical order. Act on climate was used three times. Ask POTUS twice. Big Benny Flor FL, maybe for Florida, three. So you can see here, here are all of the particular words and their counts. So, but we need to do, we need to clean some stuff up a little bit because this is a, definitely a problem that every single one is going to have a lot of blank um, in it. So let's look and see here. We can, we can, in the part where we are creating that table, uh, we can say if, as long as word it length is greater than zero, then do this. Okay, so I just want to quickly test to make sure there's an actual word there. And if I run this again, we should see, whoops, I don't have that blank anymore. And the other thing I should do is capitalization I should ignore. Because if, the, if Twitter is used uppercase or lowercase, I should allow for that to count as the same thing. So one thing I'm going to do is going to say words index J2 lowercase. So that way everything is lowercase and I can look at a given month and we can see, we can see we've got a bit more data here. Can five, yes I can, yes we can. <laughs> yes we can make this coding example happen. Um, yeah. <clears throat> okay, so now uh, what do I need to do? I need to find what is the word that was used the most frequently uh, each month. And actually what would probably be more interesting, I have a video tutorial about something called TF-IDF, which is term frequency inverse document frequency. That might be interesting to apply here because we'd say, what was the term used this particular month that was not used other months? Which would get, you know, I have a feeling we're gonna get things like the. Um, but we could, we could kind of, you know, ignore, we could have a set of words that we ignore and that type of thing. But let's at least see what we get. Okay, so now what do I wanna do? So here as I'm doing the drawing, I can say var words equals equals counts month dot words. Okay, so I have now this array. Uh, I have now these words. Uh, one way it would be to just sort it, right? Sort it by count. This actually wouldn't be such a bad way to do. So I'm going to get. Um, uh, um, I'm going to call this word counts. And I'm going to say words equals object dot keys dot, I can't remember, what did I, what did I use before? Object dot keys word counts. Because now, you know what I'm just going to do? This is silly. I could sort it, uh, um, but I'm just going to do something just to find the, the biggest one. And I'm going to say uh, biggest equals uh, zero. Uh, and I'm going to say var biggest word is empty string and now I'm going to go through and look at words.length j++ and I'm going to um, I'm going to say if word counts index word is greater than biggest then biggest equals that new count and the biggest word Biggest is totally the wrong phrase here. Bigly, I don't know, that's worse for a lot of reasons, um, is that. And now what I could do is I'm just going to say console.log uh, month and, oops, month and biggest word and biggest. So let's just look at that data in the console. And we can see, oh, uh, something went wrong here. Oh, var word equals words index j. So I need to actually pull that word. I'm really, this is, this is not my finest video I've ever made. I need to pull that word from the array to look it up. And we can see here, right, the, the, to, the, we, to, the, the, to, the, to, the. So let's do something. Let's have an object of words to ignore. And I'm going to say var ignore. Uh, the two 
the we. You, you can get, by the way, um, lists of like most common words and that type of thing. So I just made a quick object called ignore. And what I'm going to do here is say, if word counts is greater than biggest and it's not a ignore word. So I want to just checking like it's only can be something we count as long as it's as long as it's not in that ignore list. So let's do this now and see what we get. Mm. Oh, <laughs> let's put something here that'll evaluate to true. Empty string evaluates to false. <laughs> I'm trying to figure out a way to just have this be like a lookup table. Obviously, we could be more thoughtful about this. And now we can see, okay, so now we're getting somewhere. I T T. So unfortunately, oh, there's so much mess here. This is this video is all about why you need to like clean your data and be more thoughtful about these kind of things. So first of all, we're getting we're getting some junk here. So first of all, we can get rid of of and an a. We can add those to our ignore list. Of and a. I'm also going to do something here, which is kind of ridiculous, and say um, and word.length is greater than one. So I'm not going to allow it to be any words that are of like, actually, you know what? Nope. How about no three letter, nothing that's a three letter word. And we definitely want to ignore uh, HTTP and HTTPS. I could have done a better job of parsing the data. And look at this. Now we've got something. Will more today have with refugees what, this, that? But we're, we're getting somewhere. Let's at least draw this data to the window, to the canvas. So what I'm going to do now is also say um, uh, fill 255. And I'm going to say text, biggest word. And where do I want to, to write that? I times W comma H minus uh, like five, uh, height, or so height minus h. So I'm just trying to find an xy position that's at the top of the rectangle that I just drew. So it's the same x value, and then the y value is at the top of the rectangle. And if we do this, we could see here, now we have the number of tweets. And, and again, this graph is like misleading in so many ways. I'm not being thoughtful about the design here at all. And I could center the, but you can see I have the most frequently used word along with the graph of the number of tweets. So we've kind of gotten somewhere here um, with this example. You can see what it, what it takes to load a data file, parse the data file, count various things in the data file, try to store the data in various ways. Let's at least um, try running this with a different data set. So I have, um, let's use the, um, the float, uh, I think it's already here. Ah, so one thing I need to do is I need to adjust the floatus data set to have this at the beginning as well. Now let's change this to floatus.json and let's run this. There we go. So we can see I got, there's so much more data. So there's a, there's a, the date, the, the tweets go back much less and you can see this particular month, which has the highest, was, uh, I don't know what this initiative is, but that's probably a hashtag that got parsed out. So just counting hashtags could have been interesting, actually. Uh, hashtag 62 million girls. So I, I, I feel almost embarrassed that I don't know what that refers to, but I'm definitely going to look it up um, afterwards. So you can see here that the basic idea is working. And we've done in a coding challenge. We've taken some of this White House data. We've lo loaded it into P5. We've drawn some stuff in the window. But what's really missing here are two things. Thoughtful design, thoughtful approach to looking at the data uh, and cleaning the data, as well as having some sort of point of view or question that we're asking about the data. And I hope that seeing how to work with the data in a very kind of kind of rough and rudimentary way gives you an inkling or some ideas. So if you work with this data, if you make stuff, please share it with me. I hope you enjoyed this particular coding challenge and I hope that I see you in future ones. Okay, goodbye and I'll see you soon.